Welcome to Real Connection Church and happy Father's Day. Today is June 21st and today we are celebrating Father's Day here in the United States of America. As a Christian, we are blessed by having great role models of fatherhood. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the ultimate example of what a father should be. He is merciful, loving, and he loves justice. Our Heavenly Father has revealed his character to be imitated by us. The Apostle Paul wrote this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Praise to, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Today, I will love to pray the heavenly prayer uh, given by Jesus to us. If you can find this uh, prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 9 to 13. But I believe you know this prayer. It's very, very popular, but it has a great, great teaching inside. This is what the Bible says. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgiven our debtors. And lead us, in, it lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is a this is a prayer that always uh, fulfills my heart. And just because we are here celebrating uh, Father's Day, I would like to sing this song. They always bring honor to God. And the title of this song is, Lord, I lift your name on high. And you know this song, please sing with me. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you are in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love you, sing your praises. I'm so glad you are in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to choke away from the air to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the air to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Thank you, Father God, for being with us and helping us all in our lives. We are more than happy, Lord, to serve you and live for you. And today we celebrate your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Many people are buying gifts uh, to give in a celebration of Father's Day. They buy tools, colognes, clothing, electronics, and many more items. We give those gifts not because the social pressure, but because it is an expression of love. 
my request today is that we do that too, to express our love and obedience to our Heavenly Father with our tithe and our offering. I would like to remember, if you want to tie an offering in Real Connected Church Ministry, you can uh, visit our website, realconnectedchurch.org, uh, or you can, you can come here to our building that will be in 1115 South Malta Road here in DeKalb, Illinois. Uh, our zip code is 60115. I have a very important announcement for you. And first, I want to thank those who faithfully support our church uh, following our online ministry, uh, giving their offering, their time, and praying for this, uh, for our church. Thank for those also who come to work in our building to keep our building, our facilities looking beautiful. We are going to have our first in-person worship service on July 5th at 10 o'clock in English and 1 p.m. in Spanish only. In Spanish only. We will follow the COVID-19 recommendation from the health department. And we will ask, we would like to ask people to wear their mask, keeping social distance, um, sitting by your mobile, uh, social bubble, and use hand sanitizer. And please, please, please stay tuned for further information. We want uh, to gather in a safe and a healthy environment. If you don't feel comfortable to come to our in-person worship service, please continue following us with our online ministry. Today, uh, the sermon for today, I entitled, Panics are the pride of their children. Proverbs chapter 17, 6, said this, children, children are the crowd to the edge, and parents are the pride of children. Being a good father is a, a surprise, a blessing, and a great privilege. Alongside with the satisfaction of being a father comes a great responsibility. To be a father requires not only to provide for their material needs for the children, but also requires to be a great example, a role model for their life in a such, in a such way that our children look to us with pride, as it said in Proverbs chapter 17, 6, pride of children are their parents. Many parents have failed in their parenthood Many children are not proud or love their parents. They has been caused by a lot of reasons. Some of these reasons are not having uh, our, our parents, maybe they don't have a good role model from their parents too. Some parents learn to be coercive, uh, rather to be kind, suspicious, rather to be uh, trustful and trust the good sides of our children. But I don't think that any, any dad wants to be hated by his kids. Many times they make wrong decisions, thinking that they are doing, or oh, that is the best option for them. But remember the Bible reminding us that there is a ways that appear to be right, but at the end, it leads to death. And I believe that we should be grateful and also, we have to show some mercy for those parents who didn't fulfill well they, their task as a parents. We have to have mercy with them and give some grace. No one can be a good father without Jesus and God, the Father in their hearts. They can make the impossible trying to be a good father, but they will fail if God is out of their hearts. Psalms 127, verse 1 and 2 said this, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, 
the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you raise early and stay up late, toning for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Again, you can work hard, you can provide the best house, the best food, the best clothes, the best education to your children. But if you don't teach your children how to love God, you are failing in your parenthood. Can you hear me? You can provide the best of the best for your children, but if you are not teaching them how to love God, you are failing in your parenthood task. The Bible uh, has a, a bunch of a good examples of men who did a great job by doing uh, her task of being a parent. Elkanah was one of them. Elkanah, according to the book of Samuel, uh, the husband, he was the husband of Hannah and the father of the prophet Samuel. He was a great role model to Samuel and his other children. First, he loved and respected his wife Hannah. And second, he was actively, actively present in the spiritual formation of his son Samuel and the other kids. Chapter one of the book of Samuel states that Alcana, year after year, he went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Silo. After Samuel was waiting, Hannah and Alcana took Samuel and gave him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be giving over the Lord and he worshiped him there. You know, a good father always gives his children to God. A good father plays their children in the hands of God. There is not better play for the children than in the presence of God. Father, do not send your children to church. Can you hear me? Do not send your children to church. Please come with them and teach them by example. It is the best way that you can impact your children, your grandchildren, all your family. You can impact them by coming with your family to church. Don't send them to church. Come with them. And then you can start modeling a good life for your children and the children of your children for generations to come. The New Testament also tell us how the parents used to bring their children to Jesus to be blessed by him. Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16, states this. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hand on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hide their then, for the kingdom of God belongs to such of this. Truly I tell you, anyone who will bring not receive the kingdom. Said, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and placed it there in his arms. And he blessed them. What a beautiful, what a beautiful scene here. And also reminding us the importance that not just to send your children to church, but the importance to come with them before Jesus. In that way, you just leave a great legacy to them. You know, I just want to highlight verse 14. Verse 14 said, when Jesus saw this, you know, the disciples trying to reveal those parents who are trying to bring the babies to Jesus. They said, no, no, you cannot bother my master. But Jesus get in like that. And, and, you know, that happened to in our day, too. Some people said, hey, don't bring your children to church. Allow them to grow up. And when they be become an adult, they can decide what with faith they will follow. I will say that you should not do that because that will be a, a big mistake. 
I believe what the Bible says, that we need to teach our children when they are little, when they are kids. Because in that way, when they grew up, they never forgot the love of God. Bring your children to Jesus. And the best way is to teach them how to love God, how to love Jesus, and give their heart to him. The most beautiful qualities of a good father are found in our heavenly father prayer. You know, God is a father and a spiritual God. What, what, because he is a great, great father, we voluntarily submit ourselves to his authority. And the children voluntarily submit and obey their parents when the parent shows that they love and their heart belong to Jesus. Because their parents know how to treat, to treat their children with respect. The Heavenly Father starts with this uh, sentence. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done, and earth as in heaven. That means that we receive the authority of God, our Father, and we know that he is going to do the best for us, and that's why we recognize his authority. If we treat, if, if we, uh, treat our, ch our children with respect and love, they will return that respect to us. And we become, just like the proverb says, we become the pride of our kids. You know, God is a good father, but also he is an excellent provider. Our responsibility as a parent is not different. We also have the responsibility to provide for the children everything they need to keep their well-being. We have to provide for them physically, mentally, and also spiritually as a good father. Matthew chapter 7, 11 says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven will good give to those who ask him? I was thinking about this, and I believe something that we should ask in God that can give it to us is the wisdom. We should ask God as, as parents to give us the wisdom to raise up our children, raise up their healthy, not only physically or mentally, but also spiritually. That's why it's very important that you should not send your kids to church, but you came with them to church. You know, the heavenly prayer said this, give us today our daily bread. It, it's good that you provide the bread and the roof to your children. It's good that you can provide your uh, clothes to them. But you also have to provide that spiritual guide to your kids every single day as well. You know, a good father must be a strong, uh, energetic, firm, but also at the same time has to be merciful and loving. God as a father, he forgave us. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us as a great gift because he loved us. He was merciful. He said, and forgive our debt as we also forgive our debtors. God is so merciful, he's just but he's merciful too, to forget our, our sin. But also, God is firm. God wants us to follow him. God wants us to obey him as our heavenly father upon us. He disciplined his son. He disciplined his children because he loved them. He wants to uh, keep them in track and in the path that he already set up for us to be in heaven. When I use the word discipline, I didn't say uh, about um, any uh, have to be aggressive or hurt our kids. 
When I said that God discipline is God guide us, God gives some rules that we need to obey. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 and 6 said this, and we and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement? The adversary you as a father, as is his son. It is my son. Do not make light the Lord discipline and do not lose heart when he rebuke you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens anyone he accepted as his son. See, God has rules. God has guidance that we need to follow. But that is not difficult to follow. If we love God, we already surrender to him. We already submit our, our will to him and follow the path that he already prepared for us. God always is looking for the good for his children. God is a good father that we should learn from him. And as a good father, uh, God watched over his children and not letting them get lost. Uh, he helped them to not to surrender to evil, but always remind them faithful, faithful to the path that God lies down for their life. God wants to continue to focus their children, help their children to continue in the path. Not getting lost with this world, but get focused in what the world of God says and the will of God has prepared for us. Matthew 6, 13 says, And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Before I finish with this, I would like to remember that most important thing that we need to remember today is there is nothing, nothing in this earth that can separate us from the love of our Heavenly Father. You know, God loves us so much that nothing in this earth, nothing can be created, can put us apart from God. Even though God sent his, ch his children, his only son, his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and for me. We are adopted as the children of God. And I would like to read uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39 before I finish today. And this Bible verse says this, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height, no death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you see? Nothing in this world can set us apart from the love of God. I want you to remember this. And that's why we celebrate today Father's Day. I Heavenly Father, but also those Father here in earth. Let's follow the example that Jesus set up for us. Let's follow the example that Jesus Christ already made the blueprint for us to follow. Be a good father. Be a good leader. Be a spiritual leader for our children and for our family. And then Proverbs chapter 17 will be, become a reality in our life. Our children will be proud for their parents. Let me finish with the benediction for today, who comes from Jude chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. He said this, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence, with our fall and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, majesty, power, and authority.
through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all age, now and forever. May God bless you and have a wonderful Father's Day. And remember, we will have our in-person worship service on July 5th, 10 o'clock, English only, 1 p.m. Spanish only. Stay tuned. God bless you.